the tombstone and like all the things about it that made unique to them. I think it's beautiful. I it's, think it's beautiful. It's history. I think it's beautiful. Beauty is found within. Peacefulness, how it's just natural and how it like used to be back then. Just the life and the colorful. politically they can own the land, but I think the land belongs to Mother Nature and Earth itself. You can't really own land if there's animals and plants on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then the animals, would, I don't think they have any money to pay for the land they're on. And it kind of would be fair to them to make them pay. They can't even speak English. I don't think it's very fair to like, like you should probably like kind of put a sign to show that in some so you don't like disrespect the land. For example, littering or something. Yeah, because you can do like bird watching apparently on it, but that also like disrupts their souls where they rest. And they have this huge tombstone that they built before they died. And they have their names on it, words and stuff to represent that they're there but the indigenous peoples don't have any way of knowing who's there, only by words. Memory. Memory. I really just think that they should just listen. Instead, I can just listen to the indigenous peoples when they say that they know something and that they should be allowed to put up a sign. It might get some people annoyed maybe and cause disruption, even though it's not their spot, it's everyone's. I would probably put up a sign and explain why it's important and just inform people about the history here. Because there's two different languages, and there's one side that doesn't understand the language, but the British were like, Oh, we're gonna take control, just sign this contract and then we can agree and be peace. I probably didn't understand why you'd have to write it down when you could just shake hands or just say, we'll stay here, you guys be over there. And like the communication, because indigenous peoples, they probably communicate more face to face. And well, they would probably just write it down on paper and have them sign it. If I have that, I definitely donate it to the public so that they can enjoy nature, they can see all these historical sites and stuff. I would donate this stuff because when I use something, for example, a book, I've been reading it, I've like um, finished it, and I, want, and I want someone else to enjoy what I have enjoyed. She'd also have painting and gardening and stuff. And when we came to she maybe felt happier that he was there again. Even when she got sick, he took care of her, kept her in the house, and gave her her own greenhouse. I think the what was on there was probably her daily life, maybe. Like some plants she did, some paintings, some stories and how she felt on the views of um, government and stuff. I agree and I think, I don't know if she would continue when she was sick, but I think she'd describe her feelings, her pain, her relationships with nature, art, and John. She'd just talk about everything. Because back then, women were treated equally as men. 
People would get angry if she was given as much credit as Sean was. People didn't think women were as important. If she was a woman, maybe you could have thought that she was just going through something in her life right now. But maybe because she was a woman, like, oh, maybe she's just gone crazy or something. I should take her to the asylum. come over to her room, take care of her day and night. I think he tried really hard. Maybe she'd feel a little bit lonely not being able to go outside and have parties and stuff, but also the story is that she had a good connection with one of the nurses that came and stayed with her for her final years. If you heard like someone you care about like feeling pain, anguish, then he would put a soundproof door so that um, he wouldn't have to feel so much pain as an urgent, but knowing that she, he, she was behind the door um, in pain, then he would feel pretty, like, as Jewish, a helpless uh, and also kind of angry that he couldn't really do anything. I think she would feel trapped and maybe safe at the same time. Because she knew that people were caring for her. She might resent him, but she might also realize that what he did might have helped her a little bit live longer. She probably doesn't get really like, much time alone to herself. She might not get to feel normal ever again. It's important to hear about everything so that, um, because sometimes history repeats itself. Maybe I put up some signs for the indigenous people. I would represent Jemima's story. Mm -hmm.